Hello, my name is Colin, and my partner is Neef, but he was unable to record due to the fact that he has had to turn in his laptop already. So, what we decided to see was how the sugar income, the sugar intake per person per gram affected their life expectancy, and so we decided to use a time frame of 1961 to two, 2004, because we wanted to give a few years before the Cambodian genocide to show how well the country was doing, or how bad. And we went up to the most recent date possible. So, some trends that were noticeable were that the fact that it would grow up and to the right most of the time, and usually it seems as if countries consumed more sugar, that they would have a greater life expectancy either than those that consumed less, strangely enough. So the first country we'll be talking about today is Cambodia, and so the Cambodian genocide took place around 1975, and Cambodia is still regaining population and trying to improve its population. So sugar intake should not really be associated with their life expectancy. Up until 79, Pol Pot was in rule and he dramatically lowered the life expectancy. When Pol Pot was ousted, Cambodia was able to dramatically increase its foreign relations and its life expectancy. In 91, Cambodia signed the Paris Peace Accords and as a result became more close to other Eastern Asian and Eastern European countries. In, also in 91, Vietnam left Cambodian territory and Cambodia started a peaceful nation. So, our next country is Swaziland, and so Swaziland was was a very interesting country to study because because the British had ruled from 1960 to 1968, but then Swaziland fought against British rule in 67-68 and was in a loss of lives. Swaziland gained independence in 1968 and then began making the economy better. However, in the 90s, they saw a rise in student labor protests to pressure the king. Subhusa and the second to make reforms in life expectancy and sugar intake for free. Then Subhusa re relented, and in 2005, a new constitution was formed. Next up is the United States of America. So the United States was gaining years for their life expectancy and increasing its sugar intake amount. It was increasing its sugar intake faster than its life expectancy. The United States consume consumes a lot more sugar than other countries, and in 2001, people were eating 195 grams of sugar daily almost eight times the daily requirement. The United States was a sanitary country and their life expectancy was great despite their poor diet very short. Next up, China. So China was also very interesting to study as it was continuously increasing in both categories. The life expectancy increased way faster than the sugar intake, unlike the US. In 97, the Chinese were eating 25 grams of sugar per day, which is the recommended sugar intake amount. Their sugar intake was the highest in 97. So, amongst all of what we've seen, Swaziland has to be the greatest outlier because it just completely fluctuates. Like, sometimes it'll go up, but sometimes it'll go down. Anyways, thank you. Hope you enjoyed.